We're continuing our series about bug out bags and we've been covering shelters. So we looked at bivvies, we looked at uh, camping tents, and now we're looking at the tarp. This is a more basic option, obviously. Uh, you got your standard tarp here. This is by Snow Peak. This model is called the Light Tarp Conta Shield. It weighs 570 grams and the dimensions are 2.5 by 2 meters. Now this is made of nylon, so it's treated nylon, and usually tarps aren't made of Gore-Tex. Uh, you have a cheaper option, obviously you can get a standard uh, military issue tarp. Um, these are pretty cheap, you can get them $10, $20. Um, obviously we have our lovely friends at Snow Peak that provide us with this great alternative. Um, obviously you either need a tree or a pole to set this up, whereas the tent or the bivvies, uh, you already have the structure built in. Now at the moment, for the sake of this video and the fact that it's really, really warm today, um, we've obviously set the tarp higher up so there's a nice breeze coming through. But normally you want to look at the weather, see what's happening, because if it's a windy, rainy day, you obviously want the tarp anchored lower to the ground. Now we have Scotty underneath, just uh, cracking a little snooze. Oh no, you're up. <laughs> so um, something to consider in terms of tarps uh, and also other fabrics of, um, you know, bivvies and is the hydrostatic head. Now this is how much water can actually uh, stay on fabric to keep it in bales. Now this tarp has a 1.8 meter hydrostatic head rating, which means obviously it can take the water up to that stage. After that, it will start to fail. And most products will have a failure rate. So it's important to obviously waterproof your products. Um, a very popular product is knit wax, which a lot of you may be aware of. So make sure to, you know, take care of your kit, air it out, clean it, and get it waterproofed. Something that's important too to consider is obviously I annually air out my kit. I make sure all the parts are there together uh, because you want to be sure that everything you need is definitely in position when you're going to need it. You don't want to be fumbling about looking for bits and finding yourself in an emergency situation where you're missing one pole. Of course you can improvise but you know you're going through something difficult the last thing you need is missing gear or gear that fails you because you didn't spot the tear or the hole in the mat for instance. So talking about mats we're going to go on to air mattresses and, and also sleeping bags and we're going to review uh, stuff sacks and um, also um, we're going to be looking at compression bags. So let's go to our friends the air mats. So we have ultralight options, uh, which Scotty actually has in his hands right now. So an ultralight is mostly air filled, so the pockets have air in them. Uh, they often start at 250 grams. They're lightweight, but usually a little bit more expensive. So you have comfort, you have lighter gear, but you have to fork out a little bit more money. Um, but for me, at the end of the day, comfort is super important, so I'm happy to part with my money. Uh, backpacking option. Uh, so these are air and foam combinations. We have the mountain equipment, we have the therm arrest, that's an example of them. Scotty, if you want to give uh, the air one and the backpacking options a go, let me know how those feel. Obviously, we were talking not long ago about uh, even noise. Uh, we'd rather spend something that's a little bit better um, quality so it's not as crinkly and noisy. You want to be able to have a good night's sleep. Even in an emergency situation, importantly, you want to get some sleep so your brain is rested and you're making the right decisions. Under high stress, your cortisol levels are peaking and you want to make sure that you're also not losing sleep. Uh, otherwise, you'll be quite a mess. Um, how's the air filled one, Scotty? Uh, it's good. It's good. quite springy and obviously quite soft, but on the noise front, it's, it's very, uh, very loud. That's a bit of a deal breaker for me personally, is how much noise something makes when I'm trying to sleep on it. But um, yeah, other than that, comfort wise, it's, it's very good. It does feel like if you've got a rip in it, it wouldn't last too long, so that's something to consider. So yeah, I think uh, another good point is, you know, what Scotty just raised, the fact that make sure you're carrying a puncture kit with you. Um, Self-adhesive pads, uh, those are the easiest, obviously you can put them straight on and problem solved. Um, I've already had a situation where my mattress got a puncture in it. Uh, I'll show you right here. So this is the foam air combo. I had it self-adhesive, put it on there, and it solved the problem. So those are ideal to have in your bug out bag. Uh, 
if you want to test these ones, sorry, let me know what you think. So obviously mats will range uh, in prices, in thicknesses. You can have one inch, two inch. You can have two people mats if you want to. But if we're looking again, how much weight do you want to carry? Uh, how much money do you want to invest in comfort? Uh, I, for one, am someone that um, has poor circulation. So for me, having something that's a little bit thicker uh, provides more insulation from the ground. Uh, I also need a slightly warmer sleeping bag to help with those circulation issues. Um, so yeah, it just depends on who you are and what the purpose is. So moving on next, um, we have uh, the other option is a base camp, which these are thicker. They're often wider. They're more insulated. Um, these are more for scenarios usually where um, you probably have a vehicle and you are heading to a base camp. So uh, weight is less of a concern for you. Um, so these will be, like I said, thicker, wider, heavier. Um, then another option is you can have a three quarter length uh, if you still want some thickness and warmth, but don't want to carry the added weight. So this is a three quarter, which the Scotty will lie down on. Um, so obviously the key thing in this is you want to keep your core area warm. So that's why the three quarter is a secondary option uh, in terms of if you're really, really looking at saving on weight and space in your bug out bag. Moving on next, we're going to be looking at some dry bags, compression sacks, and stuff sacks. So there's an importance here to note between stuff sacks and dry bags. So a stuff sack basically just has a basic draw cord and you just stuff your things in. But be aware, these are not dry bags. These are not waterproof, okay? If you put anything in here and it rains, Yes, they've been compressed slightly, but everything's gonna be wet. So something you want to really opt for is, you know, for mobile phones or medications, things like that, you wanna opt out for, you know, a, a super waterproof bag like this. Um, obviously people who kayak or do other water sports will be familiar with these bags. Um, these are made of PVC coated polyester. So these are incredibly durable, very waterproof. And obviously when I was talking about draw bags um, or stuff sacks, these are very, very basic. You got a little cord here. With these ones, you have to fold over, roll, 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 and then clip. Now your goods and belongings are safe. Something else to consider, obviously, is um, durability. So this incredibly waterproof, incredibly durable, but we're looking at weight again. So if you want to consider something more lightweight, you've got the lightweight ones here. Now this is by Osprey and uh, OR. Now these lightweight compression sacks obviously reduce the size because the fabric is much thinner. Um, there's some water protection, um, but obviously it's gonna be less durable because they're much thinner. So these basically um, are another option for you. They can be obviously more expensive, but um, based on budget and what you want them to do, you can sort of decide where you want to spend your money. Um, in terms of a compression sack that's sort of a mid range, you've got this option here. So you can, as you can see, this is much thicker now um, than this option, but still thinner than the PVC polyester we just had. So again, roll, 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 clip, store. Um, something to consider obviously is, I've seen this done and this is the big no-no. I've seen people just take a bag like this, stuff everything they own, seal it up and go, that's oh, gonna be fine. But here's an example. Oh, you have a hole in your bag now. Now everything you own that you've put in is what? So what you want to actually consider doing and practicing on a regular basis is having multiple bags and individually wrap different things. So you can have your socks in one, you can have a jumper in the other, and you can have, you know, so on and so on. You can have your food in another. And that way, if anything happens and a bag, one bag is compromised, everything 
that are in these ones are gonna be fine. Let me tell you, being on the Appalachian Trail and hiking during a very, very, very wet season, um, having everything dry was so handy, especially having dry socks and dry feet. And yeah, it just boosts the morale. There's nothing that'll kill you more in terms of morale than going to bed with everything wet, waking up with everything wet. Um, these are also great too, to um, stuff food in and then hang it over a tree. We've done a video about this, um, where basically if you're in an area where there's a lot of wildlife, uh, bears, and you want to sort of protect your family and also protect your goods, just uh, strap it over a tree branch, keep it away from your camping area, and keep everyone safe. So here's a different type. Uh, this one's a little bit thinner, kind of in the hybrid model that we were talking about. Thicker than this, not as thick as the PVC one. Uh, over here, and uh, Scotty will uh, demonstrate for me in a moment, we have a military issue compression uh, bag here. So this is where basically it starts out quite small. You stuff your sleeping bag in it, and then you get all the air out. You sit on it, sit on it, sit on it, tighten up the clasp, and then basically something that was super bulky comes down to a smaller size. Now note, this is not a dry bag. This is just a, a cord uh, bag that's compression. So the best of both worlds is having something like so, where you have the dry bag features, it's lightweight, but sturdy, and obviously the compression. So do you want to give it a go, Scotty? So there we go. Oh. So this is a smaller sized bag, but um, you can fit decent sized sleeping bags in there, especially down sleeping bags, because down sleeping bags pack down very, very small. This is just a sleeping bag liner for demo purposes. But what you want to do is just use your fist to really kind of ram it in right down to the bottom as much as possible. Squash it down as much as you can with your hands to start with. Make sure it's all inside and then hug the air out of it. And then you roll down the dry bag top, creating the waterproof seal and clip like so. And then with all your weight on top, you tighten up these side straps and that just reduces the size right down so you can put that in your bag or whatever, taking up a lot less space. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. And as you see, it's the difference in size between the two. That's fantastic. Right, so we're going on to sleeping bags. So there's different types of sleeping bags, different shapes, different fabrics. So we're gonna talk about the first one, which is a standard synthetic. So something like this, you know, they're not very expensive. Um, you can basically pick one up for, you know, I don't know, 20, 30, $40, depending. Uh, this is a, a standard rectangle shape. Um, nothing too complex about it. Um, the good thing about this is the hollow fibers uh, don't absorb water. So if this got wet, you can still get on with life. Uh, however, when you go to traditional down options, that's when we have some pros and cons. So with traditional down, uh, here's an example. We have a, um, a mummy style um, sack right now. This is a synthetic as well, but I'll get onto down in a moment. So this is just another uh, style. So you can have a rectangular, you can have a mummy style. And with the mummy style, obviously you have compartments here. So the down, I mean, the, the fabric doesn't move up. It stays in position. So that's a nice little feature. And obviously um, you have a nice sort of comfy opening here, but you can adjust it. So um, you have less of an opening. Now, when we talk about uh, traditional down, I'm just gonna get this jacket for now. Uh, with traditional down, it's lightweight, it's warm, it's compressible. But the issue is when it gets wet, it no longer insulates you. Uh, but there is a solution to this. We have dry treated down. Now that's waterproof, even if wet, but it's really, really expensive. This is really what we deem the Rolls Royce of uh, sleeping bags. So this can be anywhere between 750 or a thousand dollars or even more so usually you'll see people spending this kind of money when they're going into mountain regions where it's really cold expeditions uh you know really cold conditions um but at the end of the day you got to think about you know what's the value of your life 
Uh, is it worth $700? Is it worth a thousand? And a lot of you would probably go, you know what, to save my life, to make sure I'm comfortable. Yeah, you can't really put a huge price on that. Um, someone once said, when staying warm matters more than saving money, uh, consider a good sleeping bag. Very wise words indeed. Um, right, so now in terms of downfill. I want to talk about downfill power. Now this is about the loft and fluffiness of down. So the higher the number, so you'll see things like uh, 600, 700, 800 or more. So essentially the higher the number, the fluffier the down, uh, which traps in more air, which makes it more insulating, which then in turn makes it more expensive. Um, so these are, are things to factor, you know, weight, size, warmth. Um, like I said, I have Raynards, I have circulatory problems. So for me, you know, comfort and warmth uh, is a priority. So I'm happy to, you know, spend a little bit more money to make sure I'm comfortable. Now, that being said, you can um, do a bit of a hybrid combination where you have a three season sleeping bag. And basically the fleece that we saw Scotty just roll up, you can combine it with the fleece. So you have a sleeping bag that's maybe not as expensive have the fleece lining in there and now you got yourself a really warm sleeping bag but we come back to weight correct so you might go okay now i have the sleeping bag now i have the fleece oh it's a little bit more weight you may want to opt out then to get a more expensive sleeping bag but lighter these are all things to think about so stay tuned for more videos coming your way